When I studied fine arts, our printmaking professor told us, when you do art, always keep talking with yourself. It is an important part of the creative process. So here I do share some of my thoughts as I am working on a drawing. How to start a drawing? An observational drawing? Any drawing? Well, with very thin establishing lines. You look and you draw. You look and trace the outline of the object that you want to depict. You work around. Don't just stay in one area. Rather, do set the lines independently in a hypothetical two-dimensional Cartesian grid. Don't just start out from one corner and get stuck in details, but make sure you see the whole picture at all times. While you're working around, obviously certain areas are more prominent than others, but make sure you're tracing the outline the entire silhouette. And also think about where you place the objects to begin with to make sure it's an interesting composition. Now, once that is all worked out, you can add more and more details and can go back and correct certain lines because some lines might have shifted by now in relation to others being established. Lines hit at different angles. And with a color pencil drawing like this, I would add color as soon as possible. And while you establish the baseline shape, you need to spare out certain areas that will represent the white highlights of your objects. If you want to work with the whiteness of the paper alone, then those areas will give your most brilliant hues, your brightest values. And you need to spare out all whites and lights unless you want to add them later with some other drawing equipment like ivory pencils, crayons, chalks, special markers, etc. Now in this particular drawing, I rely on the paper itself to shine through. Also, the brightness of this white paper lends a lot of brilliance to the color. It is harder to overcome, to conquer, to establish your drawing on it, because it is a sharper contrast that you start off with, just on a blank white. It would probably be easier to draw on colored papers, which I am doing in other videos. But here, for the moment, we have established the baseline shapes of both objects, red onions, a full one to the left, and a half one to the right. Those two objects we've studied now and both are clearly located, demarcated. Note that the half has been clearly marked too. I just start filling in color and build up volume, build up shading. In fact, it is double hard. You do the shading at the same time that you are building up volume through shading. You actually need to establish the color information of the hues themselves as opposed to the values, the valeur, as you are not just dealing in dark versus light or bright, different shades of grey, but you really need to add color information at the same time. You can't just throw in a blue and say, oh, the whole thing was yellow, no, because now, once you mix it, it is a green already. So you got to be really, really aware of what you are doing when you draw that way. I am not sure if it is the fastest way to do it, to depict something. I mean, painting is probably a lot faster even in watercolors. In fact, some of these pencils are water dilutable. I could have gone over them with a brush later and give it more depth and definition. But, for the purpose here, I am mixing watercolor pencils with non-dilutable pencils because I wanted to do a mere pencil drawing and I use whatever I have at hand. I'm not that picky on equipment as long as the tools are artist's quality and the pigments are pure. Now we are shading further, but we are also building up the color information. There is a reflection here, emerging on the bright surface of the halved onion to the right. It shows up on the lower right half of the full red onion. Already I have established where the highlight areas are. I spared them out. And I put some pretty dark lines in there where the darkest reflections are and also the surface, the surface qualities and surface irregularities of the onion. Mind you, 
This is not just like drawing two regular shapes like tennis balls, golf balls or two eggs. No, no, there is a lot of irregularity in there. And a lot of interesting color variation, modulation, you might say. Now, here I am establishing a little bit the outline. Not of a shadow, but actually of onion skin peeling off. So it is something that just needed to be added on. I could have added more details there in the beginning, but it was enough for me to just block out the shape of the full onion and its other half, the halved onion. And now here are, on top, a few more protruding elements of the withered stem of the onion, adding more and more definition as I go around. I also vary the colors and remix them, because that's what I need to do. I need to mix them just like pigments in oil paints, acrylics or watercolors. But here we just need to go over layers and layers and layers. So now working with red over layers that already had been shaded in blue. This was a quick orange, another darker blue going over, going over everything. Going back over to my darkest, almost lilac dark purple red. Now slowing down to actually establish more fine lines. Ok, we are still working on fine lines. Tracing around, tracing the different layers of the halved onion. The dissection should reveal a lot about the actual object. And it becomes more and more clear that this is not an egg nor a ball. But actually it is a halved object and it happens to be a halved onion. Now that I have firmly well established the full onion to the left, it is high time to catch up and bring out the shape to the right, the halved onion, giving it a lot more depth, color definition, that is hue definition, but also value definition. Let us show that it is pretty, pretty dark here. There is a bit of an awkward bright green in there, in the middle, in the center of the halved onion, this particular red onion. And here we are. Now it is pretty clear that we are dealing with some sort of budding seed as an onion really is. That is the green that later on will come out as the stem when it grows. And you just keep tracing, all the time looking, correcting and when I am going over the preliminary outline, primary line, I am not just tracing or retracing, but I am actually re-establishing, re-observing. I am looking and going over it another time to correct it. Sometimes really, really massive corrections are necessary all the time as you go along. Keep drawing. Don't cheat your eye. Like Leonardo da Vinci said, no, the error is not in nature, but in your eye. So make sure you are looking again. You can't see me in this video, but I am constantly looking across to the onions, to the object. The subject matter right in front of me. The still life on the table. Meanwhile, I'm drawing away. Changing pigments, keeping the paper down so that it doesn't shift. With one hand. Having a couple of colored pencils ready in my left, like a palette, as I go along. I do work very fast, but yet this took over an hour to establish. So don't get frustrated if you don't have results in a thrice, in a few minutes, because it really, really takes time. So now we have pretty good values already. But we go over it again because the colors are off. It needs to be a bit more blue and yellow. I need to make it darker, going over the dark red areas, mix them with blue to get almost a black. Rarely, if ever, in a color pencil drawing or in a painting, would I use black color. Because it just simply destroys the whole. Well, we can argue that, but it destroys the color information. Here I prefer to mix my black shades out of my darkest hues. My darkest values on my palette, which would be a dark blue, a dark red, could be a dark green. And go over them a few times until it gets pretty dark. 
You can see it here on top of the full onion on the stem. There is a dark spot there and also on the reflective side where it is also pretty dark. And we have a few more dark areas to establish. There you go, another one just right now. And I will go over it with red again. Give it the color information. It is a very tough job. A bit of shading in the background. Actually, at that very moment I decided to stop fighting against the whiteness of the paper, since over there on the table I actually have the objects lying on a small bamboo wooden yellow board. And I just want to make sure that I recreate that color juxtaposition here in the drawing. Because it is pretty hard to only draw an isolated shape on white when you actually do not see it on a white surface. In future drawings I will place objects on a white background and then it is easier to draw that isolated cut out object. And here I found it useful to include more background information. As you can see right now the whole scene has changed. Now the objects, the onions are far more embedded in the surface, color-wise alone. I don't mean in terms of perspective, because it does not really show since the edges to the left and right are missing. You at least have them embedded on some kind of yellow background that has a horizontal line to it. And now we have probably established all the lines of the different layers of the onion in the cross section. And also have started to shade across the surface of the cut onion because it is not plain white. It has many many hues, colors, reds, blues, yellows, greens, as we will find out. Here more and more shading of the background. I mean once you make the decision to start with the background you actually have to keep going. You have to keep working. You cannot leave it unfinished. You really got to chisel it in. Obviously leaving areas unfinished is okay. To give it a hint of something. But we do not have these hints here yet. Because we got to be really clear that we want to work on the background. And now a little bit of an experiment with a white pencil. I barely use it, but here I gave it a try to work it into the drawing. To give this a bit more of a pink shine. Which is actually done with a, well, I only had a white pencil of a different manufacturer. It doesn't really matter. But with more of a crayon style pencil lead that broke. So it did not work as I wanted. But you keep trying. I keep trying even in real time when I do my work. I always want to surprise myself and push the limit of what is possible for me and my imagination, my technical skills, abilities, but also for the materials. Now back over to the side. Finally I found time to add the details of the peeling of the full red onion. Making it a little bit more pink. Please do pay attention that I never go in really really strong. Rather I build it up slowly. It was first a very soft pink and now look at that it gets pretty dark with dark reds, oranges being added. Now we are working on the top. As I said in the beginning do work around because you are still building up definition. You are defining the object. This is not a golf ball, this is not a Christmas bulb. No, it is an onion and it got to be clear so we can decipher it as an onion. Part of that is not just a shiny reflective surface, but really, really, really are those breaking off, peeling off pieces of onion skin. Okay, I quickly worked in the background a little bit deeper. And I am now retracing and bringing forward some of the lines and outlines of the halved onion. Oh, that is pretty dark now. It is good. I am very very pleased with actually seeing how I did it. It was a tough job at the time. So I can lean back now and watch this with a bit of enjoyment. Yeah, I guess this is how I had to work it. It was also new for me. 
I normally do not do a lot of work with colored pencils. In the past I didn't, but now I find it really appealing. And back, do establish, re-establish, make sure you always keep observing. Not just the color information, but every single stroke needs to be a signifier, needs to be a visual analog, needs to be some element that retraces something that is out there in nature. For an observational drawing that I'm dealing with here. Oh, look at that! A quick green shading across everything and retracing. Now we shade over here again. A bit of background, few details there, those fine roots of the onion. Couldn't bother with too much detail here. It would just detract from what is going on. Sometimes a little unfinished hint says more than overdoing it. But I was sure I needed this shading. Bear in mind that light is coming from the back. It is a backlit photographic setup. The light stand that I used is reflected on the onion side. Another light source would be from the left, natural light. So this is why the shadows are in the front. And now I feel that the onions are beginning to sit on that table or wooden bamboo cutting board. Or whatever it is. It is not clearly defined, but we can guess. It is probably more wooden than anything else. It could be a cardboard, but it is a bit irregular with some streaks. Now I quickly establish the onion half with its different demarcation lines. And working on the bottom where those little hairlines are coming out, those little roots. They actually are little roots, not hair, but for me now, drawing them, it is the same technical challenge. Hair or roots, they are teeny tiny elements that you want to add. And here, a reflection, fighting a little bit with it. I left it a bit rough, crude, unfinished. I would need to work a lot more on those reflective surfaces in the future. But for a first drawing here, I was quite pleased with it. Look, now I have a lot more confidence making it. Just flying over it with reds and blues and a quick green here, a hint there. Because now I start to see the object in front of me on the paper that actually is out there in reality, in nature. In future videos I should include a shot of the table setup that you can see how close it is to nature. It is close. But, obviously, it is an artistic interpretation and it is a lot more colorful than the real object. Because the human eye just sees a little bit more here and there and goes around. And as I record visual information in real time, I see more shades and more values. Ok, I quickly had to dust off the paper and we are adding a few more details down here. And work on the background, keep working, keep working it in. Always observational. The background is important. If you do not want to pay attention to it, then don't even start shading because you'll destroy it. It got to be really observed. I give it my best shot. I treat it like the foreground. Ok, now, yeah, when to stop with a drawing? I do not want to overdo it. But, also, at this stage, I still think that color information and value information are being added. Colors are the hues. Value is the valeur, the level of darkness or brightness in terms of a grayscale. Adding blue to the shadows. Bear in mind that almost all shadows have blue in it. Natural blue is in the shadows, not black. You will barely find a shadow in nature that is black. You will always find in it some blue. Just look at snow. The shadow of snow is blue. And we add a little bit more. Now it got pretty dark. It is sitting nicely on the page. It is positioned firmly on the board, on this bamboo cutting board. Working more and more and more. My gosh! I couldn't believe it was that much work. And even a light blue, somewhere in there, I must have observed something. And be clear and bold about it. 
if you see a little area where you want to throw some color in that you didn't use in the rest of the image, I think doing so helps to make it interesting. Have a nice modulation of hues, of colors on your palette. Other than that, I obviously try to use all colors all over the entire drawing to make sure they are shining out from all areas. Almost like a little bit of an impasto technique in painting or impressionist color flickering, pointillist specks of color here and dots over there. So, now we are done. And I hope you enjoyed the building up process of this drawing. See you soon again. Much love and peace. Namaste.